Stage one of the ore terminal project consisted of dredging a huge basin out of the Skagway Tidelands and dumping the waste into adjoining tidal flats. The completed basin ended up being 1,700 feet long, 340 feet wide, and 43 feet deep. On the fill, an ore storage shed, ship concentrate loader, and railroad tracks were built. The shiploading equipment was designed to handle 35,000 deadweight tons of the ocean-going bulk carriers. In May, White Pass purchased seven 1,200 horsepower 101 class diesel locomotives from Montreal Locomotive Works to haul the ore. To carry the ore, 200 Anvil flat cars were ordered from National Steel Car in Ontario, Canada. Ore containers made from one inch thick aluminum were built for each car. A new fleet of Kenworth trucks and trailers were purchased to haul the ore 240 miles from the Anvil Mines in Faro to the rails in Whitehorse. A new tunnel was built along with a steel bridge at 18 Mile. Due to the projected weight of the new anvil cars and the anvil trains, the world-famous Cantilever Bridge was retired in 1969. A new depot was built in Skagway to replace the original depot built in 1898. On October 15th, around 3.30 p.m., the call came in. The White Pass Roundhouse was on fire. The Skagway Volunteer Fire Department was ill-equipped to handle a big fire. Its fleet consisted of an ex-U.S. Army 1943 Chevrolet with a 300-gallon-per-minute Darley pump on the front. A 1943 American LaFrance Ford with a 500 gallon per minute midship pump. A 1953 Willys Jeep with a tank trailer and a 250 gallon per minute pump on the front. And lastly, a 1937 Ford built in Skagway with a 500 gallon skid pump in the bed. The fire started in the southwest end of the roundhouse where the car shop was located. Volunteer firefighters did the best they could with the equipment available. Insufficient water pressure hampered them in their effort to control the giant blaze. Men and teenage boys from town pitched in to help the fire department. A strong north wind fueled the fire and carried burning embers which ignited grassy fields at the north end of town. These fires were quickly extinguished by community members. As the fire grew, White Pass employees worked frantically to remove equipment and supplies from the building.
Women in town brought sandwiches and coffee for the firefighters and volunteers. Fed by gasoline, kerosene, and oil within the facility, the roundhouse burned very quickly. Fuel drums exploded as firefighters looked on. In less than 90 minutes, the roundhouse was reduced to smoldering ashes. Firemen stayed on duty through the night to watch for flare-ups and to keep an eye on the remaining buildings. The story of the fire made many Alaskan and Canadian papers. Barbara Callan, a local Skagway resident, wrote the story and sent photos to many of the papers. Six other neighboring buildings burned along with the roundhouse. They included the machine shop and old boiler room, the heating plant, the lunch room, the blacksmith shop, and the hostler shack. There was no doubt the fire started in the southwest corner of the roundhouse, in the car shops. All evidence of the exact cause of the fire was destroyed in the extreme heat. The fire was so hot, steel wheels cracked when they came in contact with water. Fifty-two pound rails on the floor of the roundhouse buckled in the heat. and glass in the locomotive windows melted like plastic. Destroyed in the fire was Baldwin steam engine number 72, sister of the 70, 71, and 73. Cool water in the tanks of the tender kept the black paint from burning off the bottom three quarters of the exterior of the tender. Also lost was newly purchased Alco engine number 102. White Pass employees tried to pull the locomotive through the back wall of the roundhouse. When the front trucks of the locomotive dug into the soft gravel, the cables broke and the engine was lost. Another Alco engine, number 105. They tried to start the engine, but because of the massive amount of smoke, it would not stay running. Like the 102, it was totally destroyed. Steel Caboose, number 907. Plymouth Switcher number three, known as the three spot. The fire burned off the White Pass green and yellow paint scheme, exposing the older military insignia and number. Parlor car number 262, Lake Summit, is unrecognizable after the fire. In an earlier photo, Lake Summit is shown in front of the three spot and the 72. All of them were destroyed in the fire. Here is what used to be a locomotive generator sitting on the wooden deck of a flat car. Both were destroyed.
Although it wasn't in the roundhouse, number 52 sustained some damage. The wooden deck on the tender burned due to the intense heat and the proximity to the fire. All White Pass employees furloughed for the winter were called back to work to help with the cleanup. In true White Pass fashion, trains were running the very next day. In the days and weeks following the fire, the turntable pit was filled in with gravel. All of the scrap metal was hauled away and discarded. A new steel building was quickly erected over the locomotive drop pits so regular maintenance could continue on the traction motors. Evidence of the roundhouse still exists beneath the storage of supplies at the shops. The curved cement foundation with individual bays is still visible if you look closely. The old locomotive drop pits have been filled with dirt. Rust from the steel rails is still visible on each side. The tender from the 52 is in the process of being partially restored with new wood. Some of the burned wood from the tender is still lying around. Today, a modern steel building located to the east of the old roundhouse houses an engine maintenance shop, a machine shop, a car repair shop, and supply warehouse. <laughs>